Hi everyone. Uh, in this topic uh, here in quantum mechanics, I want to get on to the idea of calculating the energy of the electrons in an atom. Okay, because that's really the uh, importance of of the quantum mechanical model is the ability for uh, this particular theory to determine the energy or to calculate the energy of the electrons in the atom. And why energy is so important? Well, because energy pretty much determines everything. Uh, if you know that the electron is unstable, you're going to make a prediction that that electron is likely to react or form a bond with another substance. And as a result, you can then make predictions about how reactive that element is going to be. And if the energy is very stable, like for example for the noble gases, then you're going to make a prediction that those elements are unlikely to react or they'll be very inert uh, with respect to its reactivity with other elements. And so understanding energy and being able to calculate energy is a central skill uh, and central importance of uh, the quantum mechanical theory. It allows you to make these calculations. So the question then is how do we solve uh, the, you know, how do we obtain these energy values, right, for an electron? Well, remember we talked about it actually uh, a couple of topics ago when I talked about the various components of the quantum mechanical theory. And one of the important, most important things you can do with a wave function once you know what the wave function of an atom is, is you can solve the Schrodinger equation for that wave function and what that means uh, and to solve for the energy value. And what that means is, remember I was mentioning this before, is to apply this operator known as the h-hat operator or the Hamiltonian operator uh, on the wave function. And if you were to apply that operation on the wave function, what you obtain is the energy values for that particular wave function. And the energy is what corresponds to the uh, energy of the electrons in that uh, particular wave function. Now, the Hamiltonian operator is very complex, as you can see, it's actually written here. It's a series of mathematical operations, but the idea of the Hamiltonian operator is it corresponds to basically calculating the kinetic and the potential energy of the wave function. And as a result, you get the total energy of the electron in that wave function. And that's, of course, is what we're trying to get at so that we can then make predictions as far as how stable or how unstable, how reactive that element will be uh, that uh, contains that particular electron. Okay, so let's first, before we actually uh, talk about, you know, the energy, let's talk about first the different systems that we can have that contain electrons. I want to emphasize that we're not going to, you know, just going back to the slide uh, before, we're not going to do anything of this sort in this class just because this is not, you know, this is not a class where we expect you to be able to do partial derivatives or, or anything of the sort. But it, it's important to have some appreciation of what these uh, mathematical operations look like so you know that when we, you know, when I give you a number, it's really based on uh, calculations uh, that look something like this. Now let's go back to that idea about the systems, the various systems containing electrons. We can differentiate between uh, atoms and ions two different ways. Basically we can say that there is systems, ions or atoms, that contain only one electron. So we can call these one electron systems. And these are things like hydrogen atom, it only has one electron. The helium plus ion only has one electron. The lithium two plus ion also only has one electron, etc. So anything where you have only one electron, you are able to use the Bohr model and the Bohr equation for energy to calculate the energy of the electrons in these systems. Okay, and we're going to review this uh, in the next slide. But uh, you know, you can look back at the discussion about the Bohr model. Uh, and the uh, equations used to calculate the energy in the Bohr model. Uh, but that, that equation is the equation we're going to use again to calculate the energy for these one electron systems. Um, now, you have to remember that whether we're talking about the one electron system or later on we're talking about the polyelectronic system, multi-electron system, the energy that an electron has in an atom is, uh, comes from the interaction between that electron to the nucleus which contains protons. So this is what of course I've been saying since the 
uh, very beginning of the class that this is what we refer to as electrostatic interaction, which is the interaction between charged particles, positive and negative. And so the two factors that would matter, as you'll see in the equation, the Bohr equation, is we're going to need to know how many protons we have because that obviously is going to influence how strongly the electron is going to interact with it. And also we need to know what the value of n is, which remember this is in the Bohr model is called the Bohr orbit. In the quantum model, this is called the principal quantum number. Okay, uh, another word for this is called the shell number. Okay, but we'll take a look at this equation in a second. Uh, I also want to just highlight the idea that one electron system we can calculate, but also it's not that useful because how often do you see species like lithium two plus? Okay, it's not very often. So most of the time what we're interested in are not one electron systems but what we're interested in are what we call polyelectronic systems which are things like helium lithium sodium sodium plus anything that basically has more than one electron so in other words this is easy but also not very useful this is difficult but also is the type that we want to deal with um, so Unfortunately, for the polyelectronic system, you cannot use the Bohr model to calculate its energy because remember, that's the whole reason we went to quantum because the Bohr model doesn't work. So if it works, we would have just used it, but it didn't work, right? So that's why we decided to develop or, you know, people were uh, looking to find another model that helped explain the, um, the behavior of this polyelectronic system. Uh, in order to calculate the energy of electrons in these systems, you have to use quantum mechanics. You have to solve the Schrodinger equation to obtain an expression for the energy of that specific electron. And what do I mean by this? I mean exactly what I said in the previous slide, which is to find a wave function, apply the Hamiltonian operator on the wave function, and obtain a series of energy values that correspond to that particular wave function. Uh, again, not something we'll be doing in this class, but just to uh, have an appreciation for how those energies come from is very useful. So you know that this is how those energies are uh, calculated from. Now, in this video, uh, we're not going to make actual calculations, but what we will do is we're going to consider two, uh, not in this specific videos, but in this topic, I should say, we would really consider two effects that uh, are present in polyelectronic systems but not in one electron systems and these are things that we call uh, shielding um, orbital shielding and then electron on orbital penetration both of these are uh, factors that uh, make polyelectronic systems have different energies compared to one electron system okay but what we're gonna do is just start to talk about one electron system first before we can talk about one electron system, I want to go back and discuss a little bit about electrostatic interaction. Remember what I said earlier is that the energy of the electron comes from its interaction to the proton which is located in the nucleus. So this type of interaction we call electrostatic and this was actually a, a, a type of interaction that was uh, you know that was explained uh, quite a while ago you know back in the mid 1800s by Coulomb and so we often call this also Coulombic interaction and what basically if you think about two charges a negative and a positive interacting with each other which is like the the electron in the proton right two things matter in terms of how strong that interaction will be how far they are from each other okay which is R the distance between the two charges and then how much charge each of these things have okay if you have a plus two that's going to be a stronger attraction to the negative one than if you have a, a plus one. If you have a plus five, then that's even stronger than the plus two, right? If you have this one electron interacting with it. So that obviously is important to, to keep in mind. So there are two factors. Distance between the charges affect the uh, strength of the interaction. Uh, and you can think about it on your own, but you would think that the further they are from each other, the weaker that interaction would be. And then, of course, the, the bigger the charges, the, the stronger the interaction will be. Okay, so the, the more energy you're going to have, the lower the energy will be, which means the more stable that the electron will be. Okay? In the next video, we'll start to talk about how to calculate this energy uh, 
in a one electron system.